the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Of fellowship. The blessing of fellowship, Psalm 133. The Bible says, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It begins to liken that experience like the head of Aaron, the priest. How that the oil comes from his head to his shoulder to his skirt. He says, there God has commanded the blessing. So there are experiences that you may not be able to maximize as an individual. It will take a corporate life to receive that dimension of God. Praise the Lord. So it matters that you experience encounters, you experience transformation, the miracle working power of Jesus, and the blessing that comes with fellowship. God has been dealing with us through this conference, through different men of God, and your pastor shared something really, really powerful during the leaders, um, the minister's session. And um, tonight I just want to share a few thoughts. I'm going to be talking about a lot of things. Um, and then somewhere along the line, we'll rise up to pray. Every time the word of God comes, I, I, I don't know if I've, if I've shared this year, but... The word of God, everybody say the word of God. Uh, maybe I should start from there. The Bible says in John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the word. It's the word logos. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Is that true? It says he was with God in the beginning, etc., etc. Now, I just want to share something to just give us a sense of value for the word. And then... Will begin to teach i'm just looking for something i can use is it possible to is there a tray anywhere around here um if there don't worry if there's if there's if there's nothing i can i just want to let's assume this is a tray everybody look up just assume that this is a tray and now you want to serve me something watch this everybody you need the tray, but what you really need is what the tray is carrying. Please pay attention. Is that true? But the system of service is such that you must receive the tray to access what it carries. So the goal is to get this, in this case, this, this phone now, but it's served on a tray. That is the system. Are we together now? So every time you see a tray coming your direction, you begin to smile. Not just for the tray itself, but what it carries. Are you getting what I'm saying? This tray is what the Bible calls the word of God. The word of God is a system of service. It's a way that God reaches your requests and desires to you. So he sent forth his word. So when you see the word coming, you begin to rejoice. Because a tray can hold anything holdable. Are we together now? Yes. So, I celebrate the word, not just for the ritual of word alone. I celebrate the word because of its ability to carry things that only God can give. Hmm. Are we together now? So, when the word of God is about to be taught, your spirit is open and receptive. Because, remember, the word is a messenger. It will return, but not with what it brought. Are we together now? Yes. That word returns to go and bring more. So it's a system. When you receive the engrafted word, then the treasure that is contained therein 
finds expression within your spirit and begins to cause you to live out what that word came to deliver, then it returns back to God, ready to be sent again. That is why the teaching of the word is very powerful because every time the word is about to come to you, then it means breakthrough, lifting, new anointing, new dimensions. Are we together? Restoration, intelligence in the spirit. It's important for us to value the word, not just for the ritual of feeling spiritual or satisfying the guilt of not, okay, I need to receive the word because it's coming from God. No, you must value the word because it is God's system of expressing his love and his power to you. Are we clear on that now? It's very, very important. Daniel 11. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. Let's walk this scripture tonight as we are built. It's called a wine press. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. The B part is my verse of emphasis, but it says, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries, etc. But the people that do know their God, but the people that do know their God, the Bible says for knowing God, two things will happen to you as a reward. Number one, they shall be strong. Number two, they shall do exploits. But the people, that do know their God, they shall be strong and shall do exploits. So if you desire exploits in life, in ministry, in business, if you desire capacity, strength, stamina, the Bible recommends the formula that all of this lie in knowing God. Are we together? Much more than desiring these things, that the exploits that we so desire and the capacity spiritually, intellectually, etc., that these things can only be available in our life on account of our knowing God. Everybody say knowing God. Say it again, knowing God. It's amazing because many people believe that because of the nature of God, the might, the majesty, and the mysteries that surround the Godhead, uh, many people believe it is impossible to know God. But that's not true. The Bible would never recommend something that was not possible. Are we together now? But the people that do know their God, it says they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Let's deal with the issue of knowing God a bit. Is that all right? Please write this down. What does it mean to know God? If my strength, my capacity, my relevance is predicated upon that condition, then it's important that I seek to understand what knowing God is all about. What does it mean to know God? If you're writing, please write. Number one, knowing God involves an encounter with his person. Knowing God involves an encounter, having an encounter with his person. You know God to the degree to which you have an encounter with his person. And I'll tell you what an encounter is. It's the name given to any supernatural experience that makes a person or a thing real to you. Are we together now? Um, let me do something. Let me just have one gentleman. Sir, please can you come? Watch this. Let's assume you have never seen um, 500 Naira. For instance. And if I tell you 500 Naira is real and can solve your problem, you believe it, not because you've had an encounter with that reality. You believe it because you trust the person talking to you. Are you following me, please? Please follow me. I'm using money because somehow Nigerians seem to understand 
what you are saying whenever you convert it and, and make it financial. Are we together? Now, this gentleman in my, in my example has never seen a thousand naira or 500 naira. You've never seen Nigerian currency. You're not aware of what it can do. But you trust the speaker. You're walking by faith, correct? But you've not had an encounter. So your conviction about what I'm saying, what I've said now, is liable to, be, um, to vacillate. Are we together now? But if I bring out, let's see, this is 500 naira. He says, yes. You are supposed to say no. You are not supposed to know what I'm doing. Okay, listen, listen. Now, watch this, please. If I bring out 500 naira, hold this. You can feel it. Look at it carefully. You see this now? Now, this is 500 naira. You have had an encounter. You are no longer trying to believe. There's no haze around it. You have handled it. You have felt the dimension. The reality has been registered in your mind. If someone comes now and tells you there's nothing like 500 naira in Nigeria, will you pray about it? Are you seeing it now? It's not an issue because you are functioning from a realm of rest. You have come to a point where you are not only aware. This is more than awareness. You have interacted with this reality. Are we together now? So it says, but the people that do know their God. Not just those who heard about him from a man that knows. They have come to a point where they have a personal encounter. Thank you. The goal of encounters. The goal of encounters is to create conviction. Are we together now? Listen, listen. You, if encounters do not lead to conviction, then they are wasted. Conviction is your depth of persuasion about God, about a thought. Mm. But I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded, unbendable, unshakable, immovable, grounded. Are we together now? So the first dimension of knowing God deals with having an encounter, an experience with the person of God. To the end that you become convicted is amazing. You would think that because you love God so much, everybody believes God is alive. You wait until the vicissitudes of life seem to challenge you. And you hear people say, God, where are you? That kind of statement is a proof of... Um, um, the lack of depth in an encounter. Listen to Job. Though he slay me, I can't say I don't know him. Though he slay me, yet I will trust him. This is the language of a man that has an encounter with God. That no condition in time sustains the ability to dwindle what he knows about God. If you're with me, say amen. amen. So we need an encounter with his person. The second dimension of knowing God is a comprehension of the dimensions and the possibilities contained within his ability. A comprehension of the dimensions and the possibilities contained within his ability. It's important to not only know who God is, you must know what he can do. The extent, the vastness of his ability. Hallelujah. When people introduce themselves, they say, I am so, 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 and so. I have companies in, I have branches in Lagos, in Abuja, in Dubai, in UK, in Canada. What are they trying to do? They are trying to show you the reach of their company. No one will tell you he has a, 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 a company with branches in all these places and then you, you know that he's not just starting. Just by that information, there is a lot you can capture there. Are we together now? So it's important to know. Let me show you something. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Paul prayed for us and i like us to see his prayer. Ephesians chapter 1, we'll read from verse 17. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 
17. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're reading from 17. Uh, let's see where we'll stop. We'll just keep reading. That the God of our Lord Jesus, Paul is praying now for the believers in Ephesus. The Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Go on, please. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Look at what he wants you to know. He's praying now and he's giving us access to his prayer request. Are we together? That ye may know what is the hope of his calling. Uh-huh. What is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Whatever Paul was trying to explain. Next verse. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him in his own right hand in heavenly places. Let the next verse be the last. Far above principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in the world which is to come. Paul is praying and he's saying among the many things I pray that you know is the exceeding greatness of the power of this God that you so believe because it will affect you when you really know how powerful God is, the vastness of the possibilities in his power. Knowing God, having an encounter with his person and having an understanding of how far God's power can go for your sake. Now, if I tell you that God is able to restore you, you say amen, but you see that amen can just be a religious amen or amen that is predicated upon the fact that you, I have studied God. I know how far his power can go to restore. So he left you Ezekiel 37 so that you can study how far his power can restore, can, can restore people. Are you together now? So when I tell you God is a restorer, your spirit will make reference to that possibility and then you can agree if he restored dry bones then he can restore my life my life is not as bad as ezekiel 37 on the strength of that knowledge you can receive if you're understanding me say amen, amen. the people that do know their god they shall be strong and shall do exploits jeremiah chapter 2 chapter 9 We'll read from verse 23 and 24. The Bible tells us that the pride of the believer should be in knowing and understanding God. Here's what it says. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Read with me 24 if you are a believer. One, two, go. But let him that glory at glory in this. Uh-huh. That he understandeth and knoweth me. Just stop there. This is the pride of the believer. That I understand and I know God. God can be known. And he seeks to be known. Because your exploits and your capacity in this kingdom is based on that knowledge. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. Where I quoted earlier, the Bible says, I, but I know whom I have believed, it says. And I am persuaded, persuaded, conviction. I am persuaded that he has an ability to keep whatever I've committed to him. But I know, it's not just but I have believed, but I know whom I have believed. I can believe Someone who I do not know. Like Jesus was telling the woman by the well. He said, ye... Um, how did he put it now? He said, ye worship what ye know not of. So it's possible to be involved in the ritual of worship and church and religiosity and not really know. You can even put your faith upon that unknown God as it happened to Paul. But it's one thing to have an encounter. To say, I know this God. I know him. I know him. There are things I know about God. Nobody will ever attempt to dwindle my understanding about that. Unshakable. It is this knowledge of God that will help you to see through the maze 
of teachings and prophecies to know what is receivable and what is not. Are we together now? Yes. The knowledge of God is like a spiritual sieve. It will help you to edit the things that you can receive and the things to not receive. You will only receive the things that are consistent with his nature as revealed to you. It's important to know God. Matthew chapter 16. I want to be very simple tonight so that you will understand because this is a very, very important subject. Let's start from verse 13. Jesus was probing the disciples. He had worked with them for a number of years. They had seen the mighty things that he had done. They had participated in the miracle. And now Jesus wanted to probe their knowledge. Because he knew that very soon, listen, they were going to become the apostles of the Lamb. And that version of them would do a bad job. He needed to upgrade them through knowledge. And this is what he said. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples saying, uh -huh, Whom do men say that, the son, that I the son of man am? You would think he already answered the question. You see that? Who do men say? And then some say that you are John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, or some just one of those prophets. Next verse. And then he says 15. But whom say ye that I am? And there was a moment of shocking silence. All of them stood there wondering, surprised themselves that they did not know him. They helped to multiply the bread. They helped to do a lot of things. Remember, they were part of his protocol system that stopped people from seeing Jesus. Yet, they did not even know who they were living with. Next verse. Simon Peter answered and said, I like Peter. Thou art Christ. Peter never said you are Jesus. What was he calling him before? You mean they never called him throughout the ministry? He had a name. There was a naming ceremony for him. Now, you expect Peter to say, look, 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 look. Let's, let's stop playing games. Jesus. He said, no. You are not Jesus. Jesus was the name given to your body when you walked in the earth. But you are Christ. Christ. The son of the living God. This is a very deep revelation. Because the God can be dead. The son of a dead God, is he alive? So he said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus marks the script now. Next verse, 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, son of Jonah, or by Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this to you, but my father which is in heaven. And then he now said, upon this rock, I will build my church, etc., etc. But the point is that they were walking with Jesus. And you would think just because they saw the miracles, they knew him. Now, is it not amazing to go and preach about a man you do not know? Okay, let's go and get people saved and born again. And so what do you tell them? Sir, I want to introduce someone to you. And say, who is that someone? I need help in Nigeria. I hope he's the one you're talking about. And then you say, his name is Jesus. Say, what do you mean Jesus? Who is he? Say, well, I want to tell you he died for you. Did I ask him? <laughs> what, what, I mean, what, what's he dying for me for? Because you are a sinner. By what standard do you say I'm a sinner? For all have sinned. Said who? Which parliament? What basis did you use to... Let me tell you, our world is not dull. You need to know God to talk to men. When you meet a poor and a struggling man, he doesn't have the fortitude to ask you questions. But when you want to meet men of influence, you must be prepared to give an answer. Because you already made them successful and they are not born again. So when you are bringing Jesus to them, the first question is, what is he... They are value-driven. They are used to receiving proposals from people. So when you walk into the office, they think Jesus is one of those proposals. And he says, oh, let, let's see the advantages. 
like a business idea. And then you are there crying and saying, my Jesus, say, please walk out of my office. You need to give me a level of a depth of conviction. I tell you, this is why for many circles, evangelism is poor. It's not because the motion is not there. The conviction, the goer himself is not sure of both the message and the person who sent him. So the moment you ask a question, okay, I will, I will go back and ask my pastor and come back. But let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. When the woman at the well, without discipleship, when she had an encounter with Jesus by herself, Jesus didn't say go and call the rest. She ran. That means if you know God, it should do something to you. It has nothing to do with being an evangelist. You will be too grateful to be silent. Come see a man. She didn't even say come and see Jesus. Yet the, the, the force that was released from her conviction made people to say this woman is not used to doing this. We better go and find out. But the people that do know their God, but the people that have met him enough to look at a family without rent and they say, look, let's leave this God. And they say, no, 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 rent is too small. I know God. I know God. I know God. But the people that do know their God, if we do not grow in this depth of certainty, many believers will stop coming to church in the future. Do you know why? Because we have all kinds of teachings loitering the internet and loitering everywhere trying to demean jesus are we together now and i hope you know that many people have been successful especially financially without giving their lives to christ but i know whom i believe it's important for the gospel to get to the ends of the earth but we must stand from a standpoint of conviction the average church member in many christian circles has handed his life over to God, but does not know God. And I believe that it's been a burden in the heart of your pastor to use conferences like this to open us up to know. There are many of us in ministry here or called into ministry. It is important. When life challenges you, it's your conviction that will answer back. It's true. It's true. That's the reason why you can see someone, for instance, serve the Lord for many years, even serve as a pastor in a church. And then later on, you see him and say, this got in, eh? we did it all. We did it and left it. You know, like elections, I was a senator, now I'm resting. And so they come and they make it look like you are just young. That's why. Keep doing this, your God thing. Respectfully so, you see some of our old folks. They will tell, when they see your zeal, they laugh and say, I remember 1960 we served god where didn't we preach and now at that point that man is sitting down as a traditionalist no way not the god of heaven conviction based on the knowledge of god based on the knowledge of god based on the knowledge of god that i can trust god I know God is able to change my life. I'm not guessing. I'm not hoping. I'm speaking from a realm of persuasion. I may not have the evidence now to show, but I know, I know, I know this God. I know this God. If he says he's coming, he will come. If he says I should wait for him, I wait. Are we together? You believe people based on your knowledge of them. The fact that faith is anchored on something supernatural does not mean it does not have a basis. Faith is based on revelation. There is something about God. Listen, let me tell you this. If I tell you right now that I'm going to, I, I think I've used this example before. If I tell you I'm going to buy you a phone, the first thing you do is look at me and instinctively find out whether I have the ability to buy that phone. If you think I'm rich enough to buy a phone, you believe quickly. If I tell you I'll buy a plane, you say it is well. Um, that it is well to mean, well, Apostle, I believe by faith, but I mean, I join you in that believing. I don't think that you have the money cash to buy me a plane. So when we doubt God, it's a message to him 
that God, I know you are seated in heaven, but I'm not exactly sure. I, I'm just using a polite way to tell you I don't believe you. So instead of verbalizing it, let my doubt speak to you that I'm not sure you can pay 250,000 naira. Are you that mighty? I'm not sure you are that powerful. Ah. And when a man looks at you, your boss looks at you and says, look, um, you will never rise in this office. There is something about God you know that his name is also the father of spirits. Every spirit is under his influence so he can influence the heart of a king like he did pharaoh that the same boss that vowed to trouble you goes to bed my brothers and my sisters like nebuchadnezzar he would not be able to sleep he will wake up in the morning and the first call is from him it's okay we give up come for the promotion and you are wondering sir are you all right and then there is something about god that gives you that confidence not that you go home and quarrel your wife and quarrel everybody and they say, what is wrong? And, and you know, you start, no. Stability through knowledge. When men say there is a casting down, you are not just keeping quiet because you are depressed. Uh -uh. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The knowledge of God gives value to faith. Otherwise, faith becomes like superstition. It becomes like a charm. Like you are concocting a charm and you are hoping it will work. Listen. You have studied the growth process of babies and children long enough. If you give birth to a child now, for some of us who have little babies now, what gives you the guarantee that that child will walk? The child has not walked. So you have faith that that child will walk. Is that true? But then there is a history you have studied mankind long enough. You've had an encounter with this biological process. So that supports your faith. You know your child will walk. So you are not there anxiously watching and say, walk now. You can be patient and not even know when the child starts walking. Listen, the rate of high blood pressure, depression, and all of these kinds of psychological diseases, they are not a medical condition. They are, they are the resultant effect of not knowing God. When you don't know God, you will worry. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't just say, I stop worrying just like that. No. There is something else that must give you confidence. I know God. I know him. I know him. I know him. I know. I know. I know that quarter to shame, he can arise. I know. I know. Ah, I know. I know. Ah, but you've been delayed. I know. I know. I should have had three children now. I know. But I know that God can still give triplets and compress eight years in nine months. I know. I know he can restore. So it gives me rest. My sister, there's one man, he's not exactly a man of God, but he's not a herbalist either. He can help you. And he said, no, 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 I know. That knowledge gives you stability. Are we together now? Yes. Compromise is proof that you don't know God. That your knowledge of God has been exhausted and you have to outsource another support system. But the people, but the preachers, but the businessmen that do know their God, in Lagos, they shall be strong. In Nigeria, they shall be strong. It didn't say but the Yoruba people that know their God. It didn't say the Igbo people that do know their God. It didn't say the Hausa people that do know their God. It didn't say the Calabar people. It didn't even say the nationals that know their God. The people that do know their God. They shall be strong in any city and they shall do exploits in any city. They shall be strong. Capacity. Let me give you an equation. I wrote something down here. You'll notice I'm being very simple this night because I really want us to get it. 
I put a seven, one, two, three, four, five, a six step process here to knowing God. Number one, just you can put it this leads to this, leads to this, leads to that. Let me just do it quickly and then I'll explain. Number one, the first dimension I said is an encounter. Number two, an encounter leads to revelation. After an encounter, it is revelation. And then number three, revelation brings conviction. Conviction. Number four, conviction produces faith. Faith produces actions of obedience. And your action of obedience produces results. This is how it works. So it starts with an encounter. Then it leads you to revelation. Then revelation produces conviction. Then faith or belief if you want to write it. And then that belief gives you the platform to act in obedience. Actions of obedience. And then your action leads to results. This is how we get results in this kingdom. It starts with an encounter and ends with an awe-inspiring result. Encounter, revelation, conviction, faith, actions of obedience, results. This is the equation. If you want to excel in 2019, this is what you will need to pass through. An encounter. An encounter. That means, for instance, if you want to prosper, then there is a dimension of God you have to encounter. When you encounter Jehovah Jireh, there is something about that name. You have that encounter. It produces revelation of the principles contained within him to prosper you. Then it creates conviction. Now you can give. If God tells you to empty your account, you are not wondering, will it happen? You can take a step of faith because it's from a standpoint of conviction. I tell you why the giving of many people never produces results. It is either for many people, not this circle at all. But for many people, it's out of pressure. And then for others, it's out of religion. Yet for others, it is even competition. And so there is no life that sponsors that activity. You give out of conviction and watch what happens. There are times that your harvest is waiting right there where you are keeping the seed. You drop the seed and pick the harvest. Your conviction can stretch you that far. Are we together? And so people bring their tithes and bring their offerings like a bribe in anger. Hoping that God sees them and hoping that God sees their anger. Lord, I'm dropping, the, if I, I, I empty, it's my account, I emptied now. I hope you are watching. And God says, what is your idea of me? If you being evil, know how to give good gifts. Is it in your Bible? But somebody comes and says, Lord, I trust you. When you give to a rich man, do you cry? When a rich man says, I'm looking for change, you are quick to bring it because you know what will be your reward for meeting a rich man's need. Every man blesses according to his riches in the bank. That's how men bless. Unfortunately, God's bank is called glory. So he supplies your need. Not according to your need. Because sometimes your need is an insult. So he has to supply it according to his riches in glory. Please don't think I'm just motivating you. It's true. It's true. The people that do know their God, when you give from a standpoint of an encounter, that spirit of giving is at work. You understand that your seed can bruise the head of the serpent. It's true. Hmm. You know. You understand the dimension of God that brings favor and you know you are carrying it. You see that? that? That conviction, every time you see people, it's as if they owe you. You expect them to respond to the anointing on you. So when you see them looking at you, you know it's working. They are under the influence of something like a charm. They may not know, but say, um, I've been looking for you. Of course you have been looking for me. 
there is something that should make that happen. The knowledge of God is powerful. The knowledge of God has monetary value. The knowledge of God is valuable. There are things if you know about God, it will make you know other things about Satan. One of the greatest revelations about Satan is that he, it's not just that he is defeated, is that Satan can be tired. That's a very powerful revelation. Because people faint when they are tired. A man can be defeated and still stubbornly try to lay claims. That's what Satan does. But there is a system that provides weariness to the point that he will even flee. It's a system of resistance. The Bible says resist the devil. You need to know what that resisting is. That there is something a man can do to the devil and you watch him, he watches you and goes. Resist the devil and he will flee. Is, is God speaking to someone tonight? Because we need to come out of this conference full of faith and convictions. Some of you need to run and go back home and say, this is it. I, I wrote my prayer points and edited some out of unbelief. I'm adding them back. I'm adding them back and I'm reducing the time for their manifestation. Because something about the knowledge of God has entered your spirit. Look at what happened to people in the Bible every time they had dimensions of encounters with God. It changed their perspective. Ah, look at David for God's sake. Look at David. Look at David standing before Goliath. How can a little teenager watch very strong veterans, military veterans, and this young boy comes to serve food and hears a beast roaring Six fingers and six toes. And David laughs. He says, God, I know something about you that can throw this man. And then he went to Saul. He told his brothers, the brothers said, return home before we beat the living daylight out of you. And then he met Saul. Saul only asked a question. What tribe and what family are you coming from? And then he allowed him gave him spares and he said no 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 i wasn't trained with this formula the god i know does not need all of these things david is standing before goliath remember you are intelligent when david stands before goliath you expect him to shake and david is david is just imagining his testimony he was so sure he said what will be my reward first they said one you will marry the king's daughter I mean, what a joy. Who doesn't want that kind of stress taken off you? The stress of call, text, will you marry me? Automatically, in one sweep. Please sit down. Number two, your family will be exempted from tax. Number three, you will be rewarded. David said, let's go. And he stood before Goliath. Goliath felt insulted. He said, I know I will kill you, but am I a dog? Israel is this your best you you can't even respect me and David said you keep watching you come to me with your bows and your spears but I come to you in a name I come to you in a name let me tell you there was a revelation that David knew James 2 26 that anybody without a spirit backing it is dead David knew that that a body is only alive based on the spirit that backs it. The size of the body does not matter. When a body without a spirit stands before you, it's as good as dead. And David looked and said, there is nothing backing this man. Let's stand. I can go. This is cheap victory. And then he told him, he said, Mister, let me even tell you how I'm going to kill you. Number one, you see this link is going to hit your head. Then you will be on the ground. And then I will use your own sword, cut off your head. And then I will lift it up. And Goliath said, I see. I can imagine God in heaven saying, who is this? Who is this young boy? Putting pressure on my integrity. Listen, I believe, I believe. Now, the Bible does not say it, but I believe. 
no matter what direction that stone touched Goliath, he still would have died. It wasn't about the accuracy of the forehead. Any part of him. Goliath was already dead. Hallelujah. And Goliath falls to the ground and that becomes great victory. Your destiny is at the mercy of a dimension of God you know. That's why it matters which man of God introduces God to you. And it matters what he tells you about God. For many of us, we have come from a background, well-meaning backgrounds, but we have um, erroneously been taught certain things about God. I know that God is love. He doesn't just have it. He is love. That dimension is a powerful dimension. Because that is, that is the basis of true freedom. So it gives you the opportunity to replace perfection with sincerity. That in the dealings of God with men, when he says men should be perfect, it does not mean flawless. He means mature in understanding. The love of God is a system that grants you access to enjoy liberty walking with him. It's not, it's not a basis for licentiousness, but it takes away, it takes away the mentality of an angry boss waiting for you to default. The love of God. What do you know about God? And who taught you what you know about God? And what is the result in the life of that teacher? There is something you can learn about God. There is something you can learn about God, man of God. Hi. That will supply such a dimension of the anointing. Let me tell you this. I do not believe there is any mortal man on earth that can take my life. It's true. Now, you don't have to believe it. I'm just sharing with you. Sorry if I sound arrogant. It's true. You need to know the things that have happened in my life to know why I'm saying what I'm saying. Mm -mm. The same way you see Donald Trump just walking without security. You try to shoot him and see what happens. Use anything, whether a gun or a missile. The military people are not standing there with guns, but you use your initiative to quickly shoot him. And that's when you will know that all you see is not all there is. Number two, I, I believe God loves me. And I truly believe, I, I, I hope I'm right. But forgive me. I believe that God loves me unfairly. Unfairly there, not because he is unfair, but the extent it's as if he doesn't love any other person like that it's true look at my life so when your enemies are angry have a heart for them don't hate them understand with them who will not be angry looking at such a life like this you see that revelation sponsors love you too should be in their position and know it's not easy to see a man that god blesses anyhow anything about your life blesses you what kind of a life is that because i have learned that he's a god that can make all things work together for the good of them that love him and those who are the called according to his purpose are you getting what I'm sharing with you tonight? Please learn these things. I'm doing something to your mind. You will walk out of this meeting with confidence, knowing that I know something about God. When a guy looks at you and you say you are not fine enough, you say, Lord, thank you for taking such an irresponsible boy out of my life. I, I cannot imagine living with someone with such a deconstructed revelation about me. No. Not that you go back and look at yourself in the mirror and say, is it really true? Ah, you mean I'm like this? No. God who did not hide his jealousy for you, his love. Do you know what it means for someone to be in the position of God to come down and say, I love you. You say, Lord, I don't love you. You say, I will wait. 
What is more ego stinging than that? I will wait for you till you come to me. Then some guy somewhere comes to make your life miserable in the name of love. No, sir. I believe as a man of God that when God empowers you, nobody can bring you down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when you have this mindset, you expect to be accepted everywhere. Everywhere. When you hear them say they want to choose 10 people, you start smiling and pray for the remaining nine. It's, it's not pride. It's not pride. It's not pride. It's true. Listen, it is important who constructs your belief system. It matters how it is constructed. It matters what about God you are taught. Please listen carefully. Many of us come from many backgrounds just like me. And there are many propositions about God that may be sociologically right. Listen carefully. It may even be from a well-meaning leader, pastor, whatever it is. And now that God has brought you to a very flourishing assembly like this, you must allow yourself to be reoriented. That God gives you another perspective of himself. You will never be able to walk in the anointing if there are some things about God you don't know. I do not believe that any man can meet me and actually make contact with me and his life be remains the same it's impossible i don't believe it i have indoctrinated myself by the spirit to know i am a blessing are we together now yes sir carry that mentality and let somebody sow a seed into your life and watch what happens to him even you you will be surprised and say you mean i'm disanointed what did you say happened you will now sow a seed to your own self to receive that testimony. There's a lot of weakness in the body. A lot of weakness. Spiritual weakness. Mental weakness as a result of something about God that we have been told. If God decides to kill everybody on earth, I'll be the last to die. I know that. Are we together? The anointing, listen. The anointing does not just function vaguely. It depends on these kinds of revelation. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. Because there is a force. God backs him. Hi. Carry this mindset as a minister. And let me see who closes the door of ministry. Where will it come from? Where will it come from? You produce an album and it does not get everywhere. What stopped it? There is a positive entitlement mentality you need to carry. To take your portion in this life. I don't walk in life as if I'm at the mercy of anybody. No sir. No sir. No sir. Don't sit down wishing to be someone else. No. Because there is something you know about God. God has spoken great things. Man of God, know this God. Know this God. Stand on the pulpit and let that God back you. And you watch the wonder that happens in your church in one month. Not two. One month. One month. Apostle, I don't know where my school fees will come from. As it is right now, I, I don't even know. I agree with you. I'm not inhuman. I agree with you. But let me tell you something. Where did the raven come from that fed Elijah? 
Is it not in your Bible? Please, let's look at this. It's either we are lying or this thing is true. It may take time, I know. But if it is God, bah. Listen, some of you are seated here now. You don't even know it's like an immersion happening to you. You may not know what is smearing on you. You will step out of this place and see things begin to change in your life. And then you know. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you how God makes men blessings. He makes men blessings by anointing them. You are not a blessing if you are not anointed. It's true. So someone's life is about to be destroyed and you just pass the person. You brought an atmosphere that prolongs his life. He does not even know that's what happened to him. You brought life and ministered to the person. Not formally. You carried an atmosphere that cancelled what would have destroyed him and his family. And he just knows that someone came to buy a bottle of water in this shop. I don't know who. From the time he dropped his hundred naira customers have come because you brought your atmosphere this is what i believe this is what i believe i know there is a god that sits in heaven i know that god can arise and judge the works of darkness i know that I know that when God decides to lift me, let me tell you, there are enough men to use. If you refuse, you will find another one. I know this. Everywhere I travel, I walk as if my estate is there. I expect something to come from that city. HICC, listen, let me tell you. If you carry this mentality, February will not finish before you start crying for joy. And say, what, what, is, what is happening? What is this? You will come and meet your pastor and say, sir, I don't know what happened. Ah. I come from the north and humanly speaking, there is a lot of disadvantage where we come from. You know, I didn't have the privilege of any family to no leverage at all but when God decides to lift you I, I said it during the pastor's conference when God points his jealousy at you you will marvel and wonder at what your life becomes and you see when people begin to make all those noise you know that this is the doing of God and like an usher you can say God you are the one who deserves all the glory and all the honor Someone needs to know something about God tonight. Somebody needs to know, like Sinatra will say that he's a way maker. Listen, listen, listen. For you to understand what a way maker is, you have to look at Julius Berger when they are constructing a road. There are times that all you see is just a mountain and they smile and say, this is where the road will start from. And they are pointing at a mountain and they are already describing the dimensions of the road. And then they bring some high-powered gadgets and blow up that mountain and construct roads. So when you say God is a way maker, he looks at your life and says, this mess, this is where the miracle comes out from. Then it will connect to this one. The Lord is imparting faith in somebody so that you will believe. I came to challenge you. I believe God. I believe God. Apostle, I've stayed 10 years without admission. And then you will graduate and receive the salary of a 10-year graduate. No! In God's economy, time is under his care. He can manipulate it anyhow. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video.
Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Katabranda Katekatos. Katebranda Katapakotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.